Chapter 231 Love Blooms and Withers Coming out of his training chamber, he breathed in the fresh air. Huh? Three years of seclusion. It was the longest time he had been away from the world. Condensing the origin domain was not easy. He needs to meticulously combine all his condensed elemental paths while integrating his physical body and soul in a certain way. If it were not for the help of the system, it would have taken him a few more hundred years to reach Tier 7 and condense his domain. Just as he was reminiscing, he saw one of his children, in a downturn, unconsciously walking towards him. Liam? Huh? Dad? Liam's eyes bulged with excitement seeing his father finally out of seclusion. What happened to you? Why the sad face? Maximus frowned. Couldn't it be that something is wrong with Liam's relationship with his wife? Before he entered his seclusion, Liam and Amara got back together like an old couple. It seems that Amara had come to terms with her situation. Coupled with multiple offenses that he taught Liam, even an ice-cold goddess would melt. More importantly, after Liam's potential reached rank 7, he awakened his special physique, Etheric Echo. It's the ultimate charm that can bring curiosity and attention. Each moves, thought, and will brings forth an otherworldly resonance that higher beings find attractive. Of course, it also has a strong function besides picking up girls. After the physique awakened, it's the ultimate ruler's physique. It can detect, analyze, influence, and subdue anyone weaker than you. For detection, it's like a pulse radar that can produce a topographic map of dimensions. For analysis, it just makes your brain function faster to analyze all the information that the pulse passes by. As for influence and subdue, it leverages the unique frequency of the etheric echo physique. Meanwhile, after Liam heard his father's concern, a bitter smile appeared on his lips. Hey, women are really complicated creatures. Did you get kicked out of your house? Maximus teased. In the earlier years, when Liam and Amara were still in an ambiguous state, Liam was often thrown outside because of his overclinginess. Amara was often too embarrassed because Liam kept doing something weird. After all, Amara was also a previous apex sovereign, the goddess worshipped by the Nexus continent. How can she let a man violate her whenever he wanted? Although they were officially husband and wife, there is something inside her called shame. No, it's because of another woman. Liam said embarrassingly. Elysienne? Maximus asked knowingly. How did you know Elysienne? Liam was a little shocked to hear that his father had guessed who the woman was. I know every woman you've met since you learned to walk, Maximus said confidently. Oh, Liam unconsciously nodded, not doubting anything. Since Maximus met Elysienne that day, Elysienne seemed to disappear, only meeting Liam occasionally. This is why Liam didn't know his father knew Elysienne from the very beginning. Speaking of this goddess of love, Elysienne is really talented in business. She opened multiple service industries around the arcane continent. From restaurants, gambling, resorts, hotels, entertainment parks, etc. Using the specially of her god's authority and billions of believers. Her business bloomed, becoming one of the top firms in just a few decades. Right now, her business is multiple times bigger than Lux. After all, Lux just had a little of his support. As a god, it was natural for her to surpass some brat. Of course, the Ethereum Guild was just brewing and Lux was also still growing. In the future, once they are on the same playing field, Lux can surpass them all like a rocket. Soon, Liam told the problem that he was facing. It is indeed about Elysian. The time bomb, the curse of love, exploded. Fortunately, before he went into seclusion, he had already arranged everything. Now, Elysian is still conscious and not assimilated by her authority. Even so, Elysian must stay with Liam at all times. This made Amara suspicious, as she remembered that a woman often hang out with Liam when she was on a tantrum. Based on her interrogation, she also learned that Elysian is your Tisha from the previous virtual world. Based on these events and their ambiguous atmosphere, Amara concluded that Liam was having a mistress outside. Now Amara, who was beginning to warm up to Liam, was furious. After all, a succubus was sticking to her husband. Whose woman will not be furious? Unfortunately for Liam, he was too weak to change anything. One is a goddess of the divine continent, and the other is a goddess of the former Nexus continent. His flimsy body can't do anything, so he was thrown outside of the house again. Hey, this is the consequence of eating more than you can chew. Maximus patted Liam and nearly laughed at his experience. Remember, you may throw up, but you must swallow it again, Maximus advised. What do you think I should do, Dad? 
Liam looked at him pitifully. Of course, you marry Elysian as soon as possible. Maximus thought for a while and said. How is that possible? Now that we are just in this relationship, they nearly destroyed the house. What's more, when I married Elysian? Liam refused, thinking of all the possible consequences. What? Are you a bastard? You can't even take care of this little responsibility? Maximus asked seriously. No, of course not, I'll take responsibility, Liam said firmly. Liam also had feelings for Elysian. All those years when his wife shuns him. There was this girl always in the rescue, making him smile and laugh. Furthermore, after knowing she was your Tisha, the seed of love implanted in him blooms again. Although Liam admits that this is a bastardly move, it is better than him not taking any responsibility. That's my son. In this world, there is nothing love can't conquer. Anyway, once you marry Elysian, Amara would be the main wife then. Amara should agree to such a benefit, Maximus concluded. After all, Liam and Elysian's affair had already been concluded. Amara should know that there is already nothing she can do. She can only minimize the damage and maintain her authority. This I'll try. Liam's eyes became determined, and he ran back to his house. Hey children these days. He didn't even ask me how my training went, Maximus sighed. His kids have grown up, no longer caring about their old father. Seeing that his family was not home, he instructed Tintin to tell them he was out of seclusion. Meanwhile, Maximus got to Sky's training chamber. Sky! It's you, Maximus! Sky's eyes lit up with battle intent. Huh? Have you reached Tier 7? That right, Maximus smiled at Sky's concern. Congratulations! Sky said with a smile. How about a fight? Maximus offered, seeing the battle intent in her eyes. Sure, let's see if you haven't become rusty after training, as Sky said, attacking quickly. Maximus just smiled and suppressed his strength to match Skye's. And like a father beating his children. Maximus seemed to move like it was the most natural thing in the world. It's as if the grass, trees, and wind were assisting him, and Sky was the enemy. Soon, Sky slumped into the ground, thinking she was dreaming. You are really shameless. You dare to use the power of law against me. Sky said after a bit of thinking. Hey, you just attacked me without stating any rules. Although he can't use the power of law, he can influence them with his domain. Thus, defeating Sky was just like breathing to him. Umph! A bastard who can't change his shit. I don't shit a Maximus teased. What shit? You disgusting bastard. Sky smiled but still refuted. Maximus just laughed at their interaction as he sat beside her. By the way, I'm about to go into the Abyss Realm for the mandatory mission, Maximus said seriously. Is that so? Sky frowned as she suddenly thought of this. Sky also went to the Abyss Realm in her previous lives. However, 70% of the time, she died without burial. Although it was thanks to her reckless nature. The casualty rate of students coming to the Abyss is still 30%. Of course, most of them are ordinary students, not core students. Even then, if you're unlucky and encounter some lord-level abyss, you are finished. A tier 9 protection token can only buy you some time before it disintegrates. During this time, you can only hope the apex sovereign and rescue appears in time. Do you want to come with me? Maximus asked expectantly. Many years ago, Sky could already advance to tier 7 whenever she wanted. But because Sky still wanted to train herself, she suppressed her realm. Hearing Maximus's suggestion, Sky thought for a while and nodded. Then I'll go with you. Hey, it seems you're still worried about me, Maximus teased. Umph. It's because I will lack a punching bag once you leave. Sky blushed a little and reasoned. Truthfully, Sky had a little feeling for Maximus. As a man who can defeat her, even against all odds. How can a battle maniac like her not fall? Maximus was also very talented. Reaching tier 9 should be a sure thing. As for reaching tier 10 and above, Sky is not so sure. However, Maximus's mysteriousness gives her a little bit of confidence. She had a hunch that in the future, she would have a companion by his side exploring the vast void, visiting all dimensions. Then I'll wait for you a Maximus, not missing any chances, took her hand and promised vaguely. Sky also blushed, letting Maximus hold her hands. Then you better be patient, as Sky said, looking into his eyes intently. Don't worry, no matter how long, I'll always be there. Chapter 232 Changes in the Decades 
At night, upon hearing that he was out of seclusion, his wives and children hurriedly came home. Seeing him in the flesh, his wives and children couldn't help but smile. Although it's only been three years, it was the longest they had been away from each other in physical reality. Dad, did you reach the seventh tier? Max asked excitedly. I'm already at the seventh tier. Hearing his concern, Maximus confirmed with a smile. Congratulations, Dad. Max's smile widened. They had agreed that once his father reached the seventh tier, he would personally take him to propose marriage to Ella. Many years ago, Max could already defeat Ella single-handedly. With Origin, no external force could make an enemy in the same realm defeat him. However, when he was about to propose marriage to Ella's family, he was stopped by his father. His father reasoned that their foundation was still too weak. Although they had enormous wealth, it was nothing compared to an apex sovereign family. This was different from the reincarnated goddess Amara and the new goddess Elysienne. This was a bona fide apex sovereign, the rulers of the world. If Max had proposed marriage at that time, he might not even be taken seriously. This is also why previously he didn't deal much with apex sovereigns. They were up in the sky living in a different world. Lightsonville they had already gone through epochs of time, overseeing many incredible things. Maximus was barely a top prodigy in this epoch. Having experienced at least thousands of epochs, they knew there might not even be one or two of these top prodigies to reach their height. Only Fialon and the other old-timers cared about these prodigies. Because for them, having lived a countless number of epochs, even if these top prodigies fell, they would still contribute to the advancement of the Ethereum realm. These advancements may be negligible, but with their endless lifespan, everything is possible. Of course, Fialon and the others were so attentive this time because the Abyss realm was near their world. This is their last chance to nurture an extra battle force, and they would do everything to make this last bit worth it. Just like the entry trial of the Origin Arcana Institute. In the past, it occurred once in 10,000 years. Now, it was shortened to a measly five years. The resources that many people fought for in the past can now be sold cheaply. The exercises that were once monopolized were now almost free to browse. All these measures are to increase their chances of survival in the coming world catastrophe. Soon, all his wives and children congratulated him. Even his unfeeling son, Liam, finally remembered and congratulated him. During dinner, they discussed what happened in the past decades. Since the Eternal Voyager set sailed, Maximus became loose with money. Spending lavishly like he owned the world, no one suspected him about the source of his wealth. Many just shook their heads at such prodigal behavior. As for his wives and children, with unlimited high-tier resources besides having a rank 8 supreme potential, they also reached the 6th tier. Unlike him, fishing for three days and working for a few hours, they trained diligently. More importantly, after he imparted his cultivation skill to them, he had complete control over them. He can either absorb what they have cultivated or impart his cultivation to assist them in training. He also had unlimited mana, so he didn't have to worry that his cultivation would regress. With all of these, his wives and children reached Tier 6 in less than a decade. Unfortunately, because he was also at Tier 6 then, they could only slowly train on their own after that. Now that he is finally at Tier 7, he can continue to assist them in cultivation. However, even with this, Maximus estimated it would take them about a century before reaching Tier 7. Besides his family, the Moonlight Empire also underwent a world-shaking change. An empire-wide array was set up all through the Sunsea region. All the rampant sea beasts in the past had already been sent to the border and regularly cleaned up by his puppets. Although the Empire-wide Array is still at Tier 7. Hundreds of millions of Shadow Hunters Guild members were working to upgrade it to a Tier 9 Array. Trade in the Empire also became very prosperous. With the channel of the Ethereum Pavilion. The people on the Arcane Continent and the Moonlight Empire are somewhat interconnected. With huge spenders from the Arcane Continent, the trade in his Empire bloomed like no other. There are also many thousand trillion cost projects that Maximus set up. Regardless of the investment, Maximus wished to turn the Moonlight Empire into a paradise. This is also why people from the Arcane Continent took the trouble and visited his empire. Various attractions are comparable to or even surpass those of the Arcane Continent. Many couldn't help but book a visit to see what it's worth. For the army, they were already hidden from the public eye. Besides the usual rotation of guards, billions of soldiers were undergoing death training underground. All kinds of resources that were hard to find or didn't even exist in the world were provided like water. 
Tailored cultivation manuals, skills, techniques, and array formations were being trained to perfection. It can be said that the training specifications were almost catching up to the Origin Arcana Institute. However, all of these changes from arrays, architecture, tourism, business trade, and the mysterious army, didn't go unnoticed. All emperors eyeing the throne of the cursed continent were like hawks gazing intently at his empire. Such rapid development made them vigilant and worried. Their armies began to expand, and alliances between empires became more apparent. Others also started secretly seeking support from one of the three continents. The curse continent became increasingly silent by the decade, hiding its fangs, preparing for the prey to emerge. The Moonlight Empire became a trigger that somewhat hastened the war to the peak. Now, emperors were only racing to reach the eighth tier until the all-out war began. As for the Shadow Hunters Guild, it already has about 10 billion members. There were also three tier 9 ships, all controlled by the Eternal Voyager. Fortunately, one ship's spirit is enough to control multiple ships. Unless they separated in the chaotic sea, having one ship's spirit is enough. As for the blueprint of the ship, it was the same as the one Silas had made. As for why only three ships have been made so far, even with a massive amount of money? It's because Maximus controlled the rate of time a tier 9 ship is produced. Maximus limited it to at least one ship every 15 years. It is so that it wouldn't attract much attention. After all, on average, an apex sovereign only had millions of ships under their command despite a long time. It can be seen that the materials needed for tier 9 ships are rare and hard to procure. Anyway, three ships are more than enough for the current size of his guild. After they talk about what happened in the past decades, Maximus told them about going to the Abyss Realm for the mandatory mission. As they were about to reach tier 7, they also knew about this mandatory mission. Thus, knowing this, the joyful atmosphere was suddenly replaced with a frown and worry. Don't worry too much. I will go with Maximus, there shouldn't be much of a problem, a sky said, cheering them up. Furthermore, you are about to reach tier 7. I'm sure with Maximus's help, you will reach that realm quickly, a sky reasoned. That's right. With my help, you would also go into the abyss realm sooner or later. Instead of worrying about me, you should prepare yourself. Although, as your husband and father, I promise to protect you even in the deepest hell. It is better to prevent something before it happens. Hearing what he said, they couldn't help but be moved. Like their father-slash-husband said, they were also going to the abyss realm sooner or later. Instead of worrying about their almost omnipotent husband-slash-father, they should worry about themselves. All right, enough of that. I will not leave for these few years, so we still have time to do everything. I'll also take this time to arrange some things. You should cheer up, we still have a long way to go, a Maximus ended the topic. Don't worry, husband, we will get through this together. Hazel cheered up. That's right, we are also strong. Erica flexed her flimsy muscles. His other wives also clamored one after another, cheering the gloomy atmosphere. The scene suddenly became heated as they looked at each other meaningfully. Hey, don't forget us, your children. Max patted the table to get some attention. Hee hee, brother is right, we are also quite strong. Lila added. The other children also added their comments one after another, finally getting the attention of their father and mothers. Umph! What about the grandchildren? Lila pouted and yelled cutely. Hey, you should just shut up and be an obedient granddaughter Asha couldn't help but tease Lila. Umph! What a meanie and bad person, Lila pouted further, looking like a duck. Laughter ensued as they looked at each other, thinking of their happy family. Chapter 233 Copy Domain and Physique The next day, Maximus proceeded with his plan. Before heading to the Abyss Realm, he needed to prepare many things. Such as copying a bunch of special physiques and domains. He had already copied the special physique of his wives and children the day before, but he was still unsatisfied. Although their physique was powerful, it was unawakened. He wanted to roam around the city of Arcana at least to see if he could copy some special physique and domains. There was also his guild and his empire. He couldn't just leave just like that without preparing for emergencies. Although he had already thought of a way to return to the Ethereum realm independently, Maximus still wanted to make sure nothing serious would happen. Coming out of his manor, he lazily walked around the city of Arcana. His system also spread, scanning a few kilometers around. Usually, if he wanted to copy a special physique or a domain, he needed to personally study, analyze, and witness the usage of what he wanted to copy. However, with his system all these steps were omitted. 
he could copy domains and special physiques with just a tap of his finger. It seems that the city of Arcana is really teaming up with hidden dragons, Maximus thought. In just a few kilometers, he scanned three domains, meaning there were three seventh-tier individuals in just a few kilometer radius. Let's see. Door-to-door -door domain. Hidden domain. Inducement domain? Huh? What a weird domain. Hearing the names of the domains, he already knew that these domains were for robbery and burglary. The door-to-door -door domain could disregard any restriction and array that was not stronger than your tier. Maximus found the domain very useful and he copied it right away. Soon, he felt his origin domain added another function. The mana consumption also shot up to another magnitude. Fortunately, no matter how fast the mana consumption was, as long as it didn't go beyond his mana capacity, it was nothing. Having unlimited mana worked wonders, especially in his case. Maximus was not choosy and soon copied the other two domains. Curious to see who owned these weird domains, he unknowingly walked to a restaurant. There, he saw a trio, lazily drinking and seeming to be talking about their next target. As expected, the ones who own these domains are Crook Melon and Seeds, Maximus concluded. Fortunately, the city of Arcana is heavily guarded, so they should not be able to steal here, no matter what. Not bothering any longer, he boarded an autonomous vehicle. Please input destination. Circle the whole city of Arcana, Maximus said. Commencing operation, cruise mode activate. The autonomous vehicle slowly accelerated as it roamed around the city. The slowness here was due to it not utilizing any space nodes to teleport to different locations. Outside, the scenery flashed by, offering a view of the city of Arcana. Maximus also commanded his system to copy all the scanned domains and special physiques. He didn't care anymore, as long as it was copied, he would study its function later. Soon, hundreds of domains were added to him with every passing minute. While the autonomous vehicle whisked through and his system copied around. Maximus lazily browsed the domains he had just copied. As for the special physique, they were all unawakened, so he didn't bother looking at them. A physique would awaken only with a rank 9 potential or possessing the strength of tier 9. Unfortunately, he didn't dare to skin any apex sovereigns. As for those with rank 9 talent, they were rarer than phoenix feathers. Even after a day passed, scanning a few million domains, he still didn't encounter anyone with such talent. I can only pray that I can find one or two physiques, Maximus sighed. Three months later, he had covered about 3% of the city of Arcana. He had also scanned and copied about a few hundred million domains and unawakened physiques. Awakened physiques, however, were still not found. Maximus has already given up on this, leaving it to fate. While roaming around the city, he also remembered to upgrade the cultivation bank. This is where he stored his cultivation for his wives and children to absorb. He couldn't assist them in training all day long, as being with them the entire time was impossible. Fortunately, it was pretty easy to make. There were already ready-made cultivation banks in the Myriad World Mall, he just needed to configure them. After giving the cultivation bank to his family, they began to train vigorously, hoping to join him as soon as possible in the Abyss Realm. Sky also started to break through. Maximus estimated that Sky would reach the seventh tier in five to six years. This time should be enough for him to prepare all things. As for delaying any longer, it was not advisable. The longer he delayed, the more challenging the environment he would be sent into. This measure was to prevent those who wanted to procrastinate. As for escaping, it was impossible. Unless you left the Ethereum realm or were dead, you couldn't escape. How could you escape if the world origin itself was the one taking action? Three years later, Maximus embarked on his final journey as he completed his exploration of the city of Arcana. Driving around throughout the year had left him feeling quite dizzy. However, the harvest was also abundant. Hundreds of billions of domains and unawakened special physiques were scanned and copied. Now, if he spread his domain, a bunch of aggregated mana nodes could be seen with the naked eye. His body is also filled with various special frequencies symbolizing the power of various special physiques. Over the years, he also tried to combine these domains and physiques to be more uniform and powerful. Unfortunately, there have barely been any results. Before devising a solution to integrate them, he must study each domain and physique carefully. As for the awakened physiques, he only found five of them. In the Ethereum realm, fewer than a million people are naturally born with a rank 9 potential. They were either acquired after reaching tier 9 or nurtured by various treasures. 
Thus, although the Origin Arcana Institute is the highest learning institution in the world, copying five awakened physiques was already good. Maximus was already satisfied with these. After he came to the Abyss Realm, there should be stronger domains and more special physiques to be found. After all, to survive in such a harsh world, you need to have something special within you. As for what these five special physiques are, Heavenly Cryomatrix Body can control the coldest temperature, freezing time, and space at will. Heavenly Morphic Essence can alter the body and essence at will, can mimic any creature or substance with almost the same origin. Heavenly Poison Body, a body of a master poisoner, being adept and immune to all poison in the world. Heavenly Gravitational Body, can generate and be immune to any change in gravity. Heavenly Quantum Body, grants the ability to decrypt and understand complex information and manipulate probability through quantum computation. Although they are all heavenly level physiques, it is enough for him. Just looking at the description, he knew it was very powerful. The cymatric body was straightforward, it was the body of frost that could even freeze time and space. The morphic essence was also useful, with a bit of manipulation, Maximus could mimic an abyss monster. At that time, if he was cornered and had no way out, he could disguise himself as an enemy. As for the gravitational body, it was also straightforward. You could control the gravity to any magnitude you desired. As long as you had enough energy, it was even possible to form a black hole with each of your fists. As for the quantum body, it was the most helpful physique that he copied. Having it, he felt the burden when assimilating knowledge lessened a lot. As for manipulating probability or something, it's just because quantum body would make your mind move faster. Thus, before you move, a hint of probability will appear in your brain. For example, if you punch someone, a probability will appear, calculating your chances of hitting the target. And as you change your fist trajectory, the probability will also change. This special physique is very powerful. Whatever you do, as long as you have enough information, it can automatically calculate your chances. And with his vast array of knowledge, quantum cipher is leveraged. All of these physiques can be said to give their user a kind of invincibility. To those who can't or barely control the power of law, they were helpless lambs on a chopping board in front of these physiques. After all, a special body is an advanced manifestation of law. Like the dimensional source body he had. It was the power of law from the origin that produced everything in all dimensions. He was just granted earlier control and access to it. Of course, he was also the only one who owned it. Every ultimate dimensional physique is unique and only one can own it. If others wanted it, they could only study deeper than his physique could provide him. Or, much easier, kill him directly and hope that the early access of the law landed on them. After sorting out his harvest, he smiled joyfully. It's worth being idle for these three years. As for the marriage of his sons, Liam and Max? Lightsomblet was delayed. Unlike Maximus' conclusion, Amara resolutely denied Liam and Elysienne's marriage. Amara noticed a curse that was coming from Elysienne. She concluded that Elysienne was only willing to marry Liam to eliminate the curse. Although Elysienne denied this, saying that her feeling with Liam was genuine and true, Amara still insisted. Marrying her husband just to get rid of some curse is impossible. Although Amara was still mad at Liam, she didn't want some woman to tint him with impurities. Of course, Elysienne was also furious and tried to use her power. Unfortunately, Amara also had her battle will. The two goddesses fought until they destroyed the house. If it were not for the barrier, their fight would even spread around the city of Arcana. At last, after compromising, Amara agreed to keep Elysienne by their side, as long as she did not go too far. As for the marriage between Max and Ella, it was also delayed. After Maximus requested an appointment with the Celestine family he was rejected. The only reply he got was telling him to revisit once he finished the mandatory mission. Maximus was not angry at this, as he understood. No matter how high his potential was, if he couldn't even survive staying in the Abyss Realm, then it was all for naught. Truthfully, the Celestine family has long known about the relationship between Max and Ella. They also approve of the relationship between the two, seeing Max's talent. Initially, they wanted the two to marry immediately and seal the deal. However, according to Maximus' tone, he wanted his son and Ella to have an equal relationship. But how is that possible? Maximus was barely a fledgling compared to their family. His current status is still not enough to negotiate with the Celestine family. The Celestine family also didn't want to offend a future powerhouse because of some marriage dispute, so they proposed a condition. After surviving in the Abyss Realm and reaching the 8th tier, 
they were willing to hand over Ella and have an equal relationship with his son. If he died, then it's better they can have a house and son-in-law who had a bright future. Now, Max can only wait for his verdict and be a monk, keeping his pure relationship with Ella. Chapter 234 Tending the Guild A few days later, in Shadowhunter City, Maximus was in the guild headquarters, waiting for his vice-guild president, Andrew. Before leaving, he planned to impart his cultivation skill to him. Andrew was one of his capable generals, managing everything in the guild, from the biggest to the most minor tasks. He was like Dorian in his empire, handling everything on his behalf. As for the other two vice-guild presidents, Silas and Griffin, they were also the backbone of the guild. However, instead of management, they focused on production and battle force. He also planned to pass his cultivation skill to them, however, now is not the time. Silas had a tier 9 background family, so although Maximus trusted him, it was better to be careful. Griffin, on the other hand, was outspoken and couldn't keep his mouth shut. Maximus was worried that he might accidentally expose the uniqueness of origin to others. Before having the strength to protect himself and his loved ones from all consequences, Maximus preferred to minimize all kinds of risks. He was eager to impart his cultivation skill to Andrew because he needed someone skilled in management for his trip to the Abyss Realm. He would stay there for quite some time, and it was inconvenient not to have some manpower. The place in the Abyss they would be sent to is not simply some barren place. It was a strategic outpost to maximize manpower and slow the advancement of the Abyss more efficiently. Each of these outposts had its group of cliques formed by various top organizations. Maximus would want to take this chance to spread the influence of the Shadow Hunter Guild in the Abyss. Andrew would just be suitable to be the pioneer of such a task. As for the backup manpower, it was his millions of Tier 7 guild members. These people were not students of the Origin Arcana Institute, so they had no so called mandatory missions. However, as individuals of the Ethereum realm, they had the right to go to the Abyss realm to fight for their world. Of course, they are not stupid enough to contribute to such high sounding words. Although going to the Abyss realm can guarantee that you will reach the 8th tier after you come out. That is, if you still have the life to leave the Abyss. Fortunately, Maximus already thought of a plan to seduce them to board such a dangerous ship. He planned to give them the follow-up chapter of their cultivation manual. For this, over the course of three years, he had been saving all his system points. Although he hadn't finished creating the eighth tier chapter of Origin, Maximus could specifically study and create the follow-up cultivation manual for these millions of individuals with just a few hundred billion system points. Soon, Andrew arrived. Lightsonville, I've met the guild leader, Andrew greeted as usual. However, he suddenly felt something was different from the power his guild leader usually emitted. It seems that the guild leader reached the seventh tier. Congratulations! Andrew sighed in amazement at his guild leader's progress. Although a few years ago, he heard a rumor from Lux that his guild leader was in seclusion to reach the seventh tier, he didn't believe it much. Andrew knew his guild leader's history of cultivation. His guild leader's time of cultivation from tier 1 to tier 6 was less than a hundred years. Throughout the Ethereum realm's history, less than 10 people had gone through tier 1 to 7 in less than a hundred years under normal training. All these people achieve either with the help of a special physique or direct help from the world origin. Thus, although Andrew had a blind worship to his guild leader, he still couldn't help but doubt the news. Now, seeing his guild leader in the flesh and feeling the aura he emitted, the worship in his eyes intensified. Reaching tier 7 in less than a hundred years means that his guild leader talent is at least on par with those myths and legends in the past. Serving under such a man, Andrew couldn't help but feel unreal. How about it? Do you want to know my secret to quickly reach this realm of strength? Maximus asks. Andrew snapped out of a daze as he heard his guild leader's voice. This, is it possible? Andrew asked, hopefully, after processing the words. Although he had plenty of resources following his guild leader. The mana and tempering needed for the high-level manual he possessed had also intensified. With his current progress, it would take him a few thousand years to reach the seventh tier. Of course, it's possible. You can reach tier seven in a few decades, Maximus smiled. A few decades? Andrew was shocked by such speed. Andrew immediately thought of various demonic techniques of disregarding the potential to advance in the realm. Like the gods imparting faith to create soldiers the beings in the beast continent burning their bloodline to advance in realm. In the arcane continent, there are also many evil techniques to suddenly gain strength. 
However, feeling his guild leader's solid foundation, he sighed in relief. Andrew concluded that his guild leader should not be talking about such a crooked path. Just feel it. Maximus didn't continue to explain as he imparted his cultivation skill. He had already reinforced their guild headquarters with various formations, so he didn't worry about any form of peeping. Andrew didn't resist as a flood of information suddenly came into his mind. After a few hours of digesting, Andrew looked at him blankly, not knowing what to say. Although it was not specified how high the level of the cultivation skill was sent into his mind, Andrew knew it was on a level different from his current cultivation manual. Relax and take a deep breath. Maximus teased, seeing that Andrew looked like he was having a stroke. Andrew also subconsciously followed his guild leader's words. After returning to his senses, he felt embarrassed at his gaffe. What do you think? Can you reach tier 7 in a few decades? This guild leader, this is much more difficult than my current cultivation manual, Andrew shook his head wryly. The cultivation manual was indeed stronger, but the intensity needed for cultivation was also higher. Andrew estimated that he needed at least tens of thousands of years to reach tier 7 using the cultivation skill imparted to him. Oh right, I forgot. Here, take this and estimate again, Maximus muttered, tossing him a tier 7 cultivation bank. Huh? Andrew didn't know what the guild leader threw at him. However, he suddenly felt the energy flow within him accelerate thousands of times. What is this? Andrew asked in excitement. Such a unique treasure that can accelerate cultivation speed a thousand times is out of this world. You don't have to worry about it. Maximus shook his head and didn't explain. How about now? Are you confident in reaching tier 7 in a few decades? It should be possible, Andrew said without hesitation. However, he suddenly thought of soul amplitude and soul will. If he wanted a solid foundation, his soul amplitude and will needed to be at their maximum. However, to do that, he needed to soak in time dilation for tens of millions of years. His excitement was suddenly doused with horror as he imagined studying nonstop for such a long time. That guild leader, I think I can't reach tier 7 in only a few decades, Andrew suddenly took back his previous words. Hehe, <laughs> you can't fool me, a Maximus looked at him knowingly. I need you in the abyss realm, so you better not delay. This? All right, a Andrew could only reluctantly agree. Andrew knew about the mandatory mission. Thus, hearing that his guild leader needed him, no matter how hard it was, he would do his best. Furthermore, hearing they were about to change the map, he couldn't help but be excited. Soon, they talked more about the details of the plan. Before Andrew proceeded to training, he needed to establish a management group. It should be able to manage the group for at least a few thousand years without any problems. There were also those tier 7 guild members to persuade to come to the Abyss Realm. Although he was confident that no one could resist having the advanced cultivation manual, they still needed to plan it rigorously. They also discussed the plan to store enough supplies for the guild for a thousand years. After all, once Maximus came to the Abyss Realm, he could only secretly return to the Ethereum Realm. Although he already bought a disguise that could fool even a continental array, it was better to be prepared. Oh, before I forget, remember to put this on when you train in the time dilation chamber. What is this? Andrew subconsciously asked. Suddenly, a warm current flowed into him, making him clear-headed. All the distracting thoughts in his mind seemed to vanish out of thin air. Seeing Maximus, who had already walked out, he couldn't help but be thankful. This should be the measure his guild leader left for him so he wouldn't go crazy even if he trained for millions of years without stopping. I will not let you down, guild leader. Andrew vowed. Chapter 235 Last Goodbye after imparting his cultivation skill to Andrew, Maximus returned to his empire. This time, he also shared his cultivation skill with Doran and the two generals, Johnson and Smith. As for others, they could only wait until he had enough strength. After calming down and feeling the newfound cultivation skill, they began to discuss the follow-up plan for what they would do in his absence. Fortunately, Maximus was mostly a hands-off keeper, so whether he was present or not did not affect the running of the empire. Furthermore, he could return to his empire at any time without fear of being detected. Thus, he didn't need to make many preparations or backups. And even if, by some twist of fate, various emperors attacked him without thinking, the hundreds of millions of puppets spread throughout the empire would shed their true form and show them who's boss. These were tier 8 puppets reinforced with atomic god metal and his battle knowledge. Although they couldn't use the power of law, they could still fight back-to-back -back when clustered together. 
In case that didn't work, there was also a hidden weapon of mass destruction in his empire. Although Maximus was unsure if it could kill an apex sovereign, harming and sending them back to where they belong should be feasible. After that, he also sent resources they may need in his absence. Like the materials for the array and architectures. Resources are also needed for the Moonlight Academy, Imperial Army, and Empire citizens. Maximus regularly purchased it at the Myriad World Mall, reasoning that he had obtained the materials from the Arcane Continent. Now that he is leaving, if they bought the material in the Arcane Continent, his disguise would blow up. After all, the various resources he provided for the Empire are not just something you can buy with money. This is also the situation with his guild. So, instead of thinking of various excuses, he directly sent them resources they could use after he left. After finishing his business with his minister and generals, Maximus arrived at the hidden underground space of his castle. This should be enough space, a Maximus estimated after looking around. He planned on creating a cross-border teleportation coordinate array. It was impossible to teleport from one dimension to another without the assistance of the world's origin. Breaking the dimensional barrier with just your own strength is impossible. Even an apex sovereign couldn't do it. They needed to set up a bunch of arrays and a little help from the world's origin. However, it was not so impossible for him. He possessed a variety of domains and unawakened physiques. Many of which pertain to space, void teleportation, barrier breaking, cross-border, etc. More importantly, he had unlimited mana. In this world, nothing can't be broken by a continuous flow. The hardest stone can be disintegrated by water. The steel will rust if left unattended. He was confident that no matter how strong the dimensional barrier was, it did not have unlimited durability. Of course, to hasten the process and make it more precise, he still needed to integrate domains and physiques that would likely help him cross-dimensional travel. After solving the process of traveling, he only needed a coordinate. The cross-dimensional teleportation coordinate array he was creating was perfect for this. Without precise coordinates, getting lost in the void of myriad dimensions is highly possible. After all, he couldn't physically see or feel the Ethereum realm once he was in another dimension. With this cross-border teleportation coordinate array, he could have precisely gauged where the Ethereum realm was. Soon, he began setting up the array. Maximus had already prepared the array blueprint before he came here, so he only needed to gather the materials. If he had been the only one working on this array previously, it would have taken him at least hundreds of years to finish it. Now, by spreading his domain, he could simultaneously work on the cross-border teleportation coordinate array without a sweat. It's just that the burden within his mind was a little large. Activating the quantum body, the burden on his mind lightened. He felt he had additional computational power, helping him process all kinds of information. His progress thus began to accelerate, with his domain operating like a precise machine. However, after a few hours, just when he thought he could finish the array immediately, the activated special physique, the quantum body, suddenly malfunctioned and stopped working. Huh? What happened? Maximus stopped what he was doing and investigated the problem. Concentrating on his domain, he found the source of the problem. The power of law naturally stored in the physique was gone. Thankfully, it seemed that the special physique automatically absorbed the power of law to replenish itself. After all, nothing is perfect in this world, Maximus smiled wryly. After looking at this problem in the pile of books in his dimensional space, Maximus came to know that the power of the special physique is limited. Because his physique is at the ultimate dimensional level, he never felt it needed replenishment. Furthermore, his physique is a dimensional source body. It is the direct manifestation of the source of energy in all dimensions. How could it lack something like the power of law? As for heaven-level physique, it's just a manifestation of law from a single dimension. Besides the limited storage of power of law, it replenishes slowly like a turtle. Of course, as long as he upgrades his physique to another level, he can have unlimited power of law. By then, he can also unleash these copied physiques for as long as he wants. For now, he can only continue his work and wait until the power of law in the quantum body is replenished. Fortunately, there is also a bunch of unawakened physiques that can boost his mind. Together, they are almost as powerful as the quantum body. A year later. Huh? Finally finished, Maximus smiled in satisfaction. The cross-border teleportation coordinate array he set up was equivalent to a tier 9 array. Although it was merely a coordinate array, finishing it in just a year is already phenomenal. Now I can finally relax. 
All the preparations were almost done. Everything was completed from his family, guild, empire, and even his plans for his return. He had been working non-stop for years and needed a vacation. Sky still had not broken through to Tier 7, so he was not in a hurry. Time for a vacation. He planned to roam around his empire for a bit. As a veritable paradise he had painstakingly built, it was where he wanted to relax. Soon, the day passed and Maximus quickly grew bored and called his family. Husband. Dad. They called excitedly. Knowing that it might be a hundred years later that they would meet again. Even if they were busy or had a lot to do, they made time to relax with him. Maximus also forgot to tell them he could return to the Ethereum realm whenever he wanted. However, even if he remembers it, he will keep it a secret not to ruin the fun. He also wanted them to feel the urgency to train and make themselves stronger. Where do you want to go? Maximus asked with a smile. Soon, they visited different foods that conquered everyone's appetite. Resorts and entertainment parks that even people of their status would enjoy. They also visited the farms. The vast tracts of land teeming with various spiritual plants. The domesticated animals filled the palate of the empire. The purified sea teeming with various aquatic resources. Maximus and his family stopped training and relaxed wholeheartedly like mortals. After a year of indulgence, Sky finally broke through the seventh tier. Maximus and his family could only reluctantly come back to their home. Congratulations on reaching the seventh tier. They said to her. Although Sky disrupted their family bonding, they were also happy that their husband slash father had a companion in such a dangerous world. Thank you you will also reach this realm soon. Sky encourages. They just nodded and vowed to their heart to quickly train after their husband slash father left. Seeing the atmosphere was not right, Maximus quickly changed the topic. Do you need to prepare anything? No, there is nothing to prepare, Sky shook her head. In this life, she had no friends or family besides Maximus and her family. Knowing that Maximus had already prepared everything, what more could she do? Then let's report tomorrow, Maximus decided. Maximus still hadn't reported his current strength as he needed to prepare. Once he reported it, he would be directly sent to the Abyss Realm, leaving him no time to prepare. Then tomorrow, Sky nodded, looking at him and his wives meaningfully. That night, Maximus and his wives went wild and tried all kinds of things. After the deed was done, they collapsed one by one. Maximus could only applaud his physique. Besides mana, it also gave him unlimited stamina. Seeing his wife sleeping soundly, he couldn't help but smile. Don't worry, we still have immortality ahead of us, Maximus comforted.